you led the creation of ChatGPT. At what point do you, did you realize, first of all, these LLMs are the path to go and then a chatbot would be, or some way to instruct them would be a useful thing to do? Before ChatGPT, OpenAI had these instruction following models. And uh, that was ba- the idea there was um, we had base models and people can um, prompt them in elaborate ways. Um, but uh, they're also kind of hard to prompt. You had to, uh, they basically do autocomplete. So you have to set up a very good prompt with some examples. So uh, people at OpenAI uh, were working on um, just taking the base models and making them easier to prompt so that if you just wrote a question, it would answer the question instead of giving you more questions or something. Uh, so we had these instruction following models, which were kind of like base models, but a little easier to use. Um, and those were the original ones deployed in the API uh, or after um, GPT-3, those were the next uh, generation of models. Um, then at the same time, there were definitely a lot of people thinking about um, chat. So uh, so Google had some papers, uh, like they had uh, Lambda and um, earlier Mina. So they had these chat bots and it was more like, um, uh, like you had a, it was more like a base model that was really specialized to um, the task of chat, really good at chat. And uh, like, I think at least uh, looking at the examples from the paper, it was more uh, used for sort of fun applications, like um, where the model would uh, like take on some persona and pretend to be that persona. It was not so functional, like, um, like help me refactor my code. Um, so yeah, there are definitely people thinking about chat. I had worked on a project before uh, looking at chat called uh, WebGPT, which was more about doing question answering with the help of uh, web browsing and retrieval. And well, when you do question answering, uh, it really wants to be in a chat because um, you always uh, want to ask follow-up questions or sometimes you need a clar- the, the model should ask a clarifying question because the question's ambiguous. So it was kind of clear after we did the first version of that that we should the next version should be conversational. So anyway, we started working on uh, like a conversational chat assistant, um, and uh, we uh, this was built on top of GPT three point five, which was done training at the beginning of twenty twenty two, and uh, that model was quite good at language and code. So we quickly realized that it was actually uh, quite good at coding help, and that was one of the things we were excited about. So yeah, we worked on that. Uh, we worked on that for, for most of the year and, uh, we had, we had browsing, um, as another feature in it, though we ended up, uh, like de-emphasizing that later on because the, like the model's internal knowledge was so good that we didn't, that the browsing, um, wasn't the most interesting thing about it. Um, and then, uh, we were thinking about, we had it out for beta testing or to friends and family for a while. And, uh, we were thinking about doing a public release, um, but um, at that time, uh, actually GPT-4 finished training in August or, um, yeah, in, in August that year. And um, actually the, um, like the flagship RL effort at OpenAI was the instruction following effort because yeah. that was the models that were being deployed into production. So um, like the first fine tunes of GPT-4 used that, um, that whole stack. And that was... Um, yeah, those uh, models were really good, and everyone got really excited about that after seeing the uh, like instruct fine tune GPT fours. Uh, but so they were really, really good. They would occasionally give you amazing outputs, but they were also like a little bit. The model was clearly like pretty unreliable. Like it would sometimes hallucinate it a lot, and it was like pretty. It would sometimes give you pretty unhinged outputs. So it was clearly not quite ready for prime time, but it was like obviously very good. Um, and uh, yeah, so. I guess that um, people uh, forgot about chat for a little while after that because about this like alternative branch. Uh, but then we we ended up, um, we pushed it further and we ended up like mixing together all the data sets like the instruct and the chat data and to try to get something that was the best of both worlds. And uh, I think the, yeah, the models we, the chat models were like, uh, were clearly more um, like it was an easy, easier to use. It was sort of more, um, it sort of uh, like automatically had much more sensible behavior in terms of like the model knowing its own limitations. The other thing about chat was that 
when we had these instruct models, uh, like the task of uh, complete this text, but in a nice way or in a helpful way, that's like a pretty poorly defined task. So I think uh, like, I think that task is like both confusing for the model and for the human who's supposed to do the data labeling. Whereas for chat, um, I think people had an intuitive sense of uh, like what a helpful robot should be like. So I think it was uh, just much easier to tell people uh, like, uh, to, to give for people to get the idea of what, what the model was supposed to do. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so that, so as a result, I think the, um, like the model had a much more coherent personality and, uh, like it was much like easier to get, um, like robot, like pretty sensible behavior, um, robustly. Is it the case that anybody could have made chat GBT using your publicly available fine tuning API? Not exactly. I mean, uh, they could have. Um, I don't remember the status of which models were available available for fine tuning. Uh, you, uh, assuming we had three point five available for fine tuning at the time, you could have made something pretty decently close. But I'm not sure you would have. Um, I don't think you would have been able to do just one iteration of fine tuning where you have like pure, purely human written data and you fine tune on that. I think you would want like you would want to do several iterations. Yeah. It, like if you're not going to do RL. Um, which which we did, um, you would want to do some kind of iterative supervised fine tuning where you have like humans edit the model generated outputs because it's really hard to get people to, like if you train on human generated data, even if it's really high quality, it's just hard for a model to fit that data perfectly because it might not be like, it might not be something a model is capable of outputting. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to do something iterative that looks a little bit more like RL. Uh, so I think if you had done that, you could have gotten something pretty close, but, um, that would have been kind of non-trivial. Um, but we also had another, uh, like instruction following model trained with RL that was released a little before ChatGPT. So I think if you put a chat like wrapper on that, you would get something decently close. Uh, but it like that model, um, like if you just prompted it with chat, um, so, but that model had some, uh, differences in, uh, strengths. Like it was like that model was pretty good at writing and poetry and so forth, but it wasn't, uh, it sort of, it wasn't as good at knowing its limitations and, uh, at factuality and so forth. 